Hey guys, I'm taking a closer look inside the Stromberg Carlson Model 64. Thanks to a very helpful anti-radio form member, I now have a legible schematic and some service tips that were posted way back in the day in a radio magazine. So what I'm looking at now is this power supply stuff and all these caps. I notice uh, there are a few notes on the schematic that say 25 hertz only. And a line going to that 4 megahertz cap. Some of these components are optional only if you had a 25 hertz environment. And I'm guessing that this is not. That this is a 60 hertz model. Now one of the service notes mentioned about this guy. C36 1.3 microfarad. The one right off of the rectifier tube. The one that sees the highest voltage I mentioned can get leaky and uh, develop heat and start leaking and it should be replaced with a cap rated for at least 600 volts and they suggest mounting it external because it's inside I think this box along with one or two of the interstage transformers I'm thinking T2 and maybe T1 and they also mention it's mounted in a socket and sure enough there is it appears to be an 8-pin socket underneath the chassis that that thing is plugged into. So I could try to unplug it, pry this open, replace the cap and bury it inside, but I do not want to risk damaging that transformer, so I'm going to do what they suggest, which is to mount an external one. And I'm guessing that's what somebody probably did back in the day. In fact, they probably did a bunch of them. So we see here we got an 8 microfarad, an 8 microfarad, another 8 microfarad. Well, so probably to replace these, it's probably to replace the 8, the 8, and maybe they even went used, oh, sorry, and the 16, and I'm not sure what they might have used for that 1.36. There's a 0.1 rated for 600 volts, that might be it. It's also this can up here, so maybe they used an 888 to replace the 1.3 and the 2.8s, and that this is the 16. It's hard to say until I start tracing out that wiring. Unfortunately, in the schematic, they don't show it as being wired into a socket. So I'm not sure what pins on that socket correspond to the tube pins. Nor do they on this. They show the tube bases on the speaker plug, but not that capacitor block. Well, at least they got something to go on. Oh, I know this is another 8 down in there. And they also mentioned a problem with, I think it was the output transformer, which uh, I believe is this guy, that the material they used inside of this to seal and insulate it breaks down over time and has a, uh, a detrimental effect on the output and it can start getting hum. Uh, we'll find that out, I guess, when this thing's all back together. It may have been replaced back in the day. Hard to say, but uh, since this has seen at least one, if, if not multiple stages of work done to it, I would not be surprised if that was a common problem that that did get replaced. And yeah, that has a, uh, a better one in there now. And there were a few other tips. One had to do with, uh, I believe, this cap. I mentioned replacing that because it's a dual, I think, 0.1 microfarad inside that can, and the can is grounded, and internally the cap can lose connection to that outer ground so we can deal with that. Now the one thing I still don't have is I got component values I don't have component rating so there's no voltage rating and there's no wattage rating. No voltage for the caps no wattage for the resistors. I gotta figure that this big guy down here is this and it's three sections 127, 115 and 15,000 so well, that's something I can start checking. Let's check the resistance on this. And start checking component values. So, for example, right off this tap, we've got a resistor. And if we look here, right off that tap, it looks like a 0.5 meg. So, body N dot. So, body green is 5, and 0 dot 4, so that would be. Uh, that would be a 0.5 meg resistor. All right, so you know, bit by bit, I, ideally you start going through this and things start to click. So things start to make sense as you identify components on the schematic, and in reality, and the values match up. 
So I think so far I've identified at least this resistor and that resistor. And I'll just slowly start working my way through the whole thing. They don't show resistance readings on these transformers, but at least I can check for continuity. I know that they're going to be a few hundred ohms, and this is a reasonable value for uh, the audio. And the IF should just be a few ohms. I printed out the rest of the service info I got from Nostalgia and realized that there's actually a wiring diagram and parts locator, which will aid me greatly. And uh, there's also another version of the schematic I hadn't realized on the first page. It uh, looks like somebody inserted this from some other service info. And down here is a mini version of the 64 schematic along with the 60 up top. That's what threw me off. And somebody has handwritten the component values down in here. Alright, so I'm armed with, I think, enough info to get started, but immediately realized something's not quite right. Look at this parts locator. And so there's a big resistor down here. And here's transformer. And a can looking thing, and we got a box here, and things are starting to line up pretty good. Little tube sockets, output transformer right there. Until we get to this. There's nothing here. We can see two holes where something used to be mounted here, and a bunch of those caps that were stuck in. It's supposed to be a transformer there. And it took a little bit of detective work because of the way they laid this out. I'm pretty darn sure that it's this transformer that's missing. See, the problem is with the service info, on the schematic, they refer to things like T1, T2. Parts locator, it says P24025, no T1 or T2 designator. So you kind of have to go from the parts locator to the wiring diagram and then match that up with the schematic. So. This is that P24025. And it's got just a, a coil on either side, secondary, primary. And the only thing I see like that on the schematic is this guy because these two have taps on them. So the question is what did they do to make this work without that transformer? Or can it work without that transformer? So I just notice this bit of ugliness here. Now there is one way I've heard of that guys can have done to get around these, especially in older sets like TRF, where the uh, TRF radios, where the interstage transformers have gone open, is you can use RC coupling. Or rewind the transformer, or by some miracle, if I could locate a, an exact replacement. Or perhaps a Hammond Universal Replacement Transformer. Could be uh, could be used for that. Of course, very little info to go on. We just have a symbol there on the schematic, and we have a part number, but no details about the DC resistance or the impedance. I suppose the simplest thing to do would be to identify this tube, and I can look up and see what number on the base that pin would be, and see what the heck it's going to. Similarly, I can try to locate these components and figure out what they did. So, what I'm getting at is, one way you can work around this is to use a capacitor here to couple a signal from this side to this side. And perhaps have to alter some of these resistance values or put in resistors here to simulate the, the load. I already got one over here, but the value may need to be tweaked. Uh, and without this being open, uh, there'd be no plate voltage getting over here. So you can't just put a capacitor from here to here. You have to do something to replace that. Otherwise, this tube gets no juice and can't do it. It can't amplify. So I guess that's another thing I could uh, check out too. Is the plate on the 37. What the heck is it going to? Here's a Type 37 tube and pin out, so the plate is pin 2. That's reading clockwise and you go off of these two filament pins which are the bigger pins on it. 
37 is down here, and I believe these are the filament pins. So this would be then pin 2. And it's going to 0.1 microfarad cap and a resistor going up to this wire, which goes into some mess down in here, and another uh, 0.1 cap. So they put a 10K resistor on here, body and dots. Body is brown and is black, so that's one, zero, and then orange. It's at three more zeros, so 10,000 ohms. So if we go back to the schematic, it looks like they may very well have replaced this with a 10K resistor. And maybe put a 0.1 microfarad cap across here. I'll have to check out uh, pin 40, that 42 tube, which is right next to it. I believe it's this guy. So let's look up a 42 and see what pin number that is. Looks kind of falling apart here, but still very usable. Alright, so that is uh, I guess G1, pin 4, would be the one right above the cathode. Okay, so now we go down here. And there's the fat pin, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's got... Yeah, 0.1 microfarad cap. Bam, right to that other tube. So they replaced that transformer with a plant omega for a cap and some resistors. Which as I said, I've seen is done as a technique, so this mess, so <laughs> this, this uh, pair of dog bones here, this dog bone and this cap, I believe are replacing that transformer. Oh, when I did uh, measure this power resistor, and these two sections are good. This appears to be wide open. It's measuring over one mega ohm. I'll know for sure by disconnecting one of these leads here and measuring the resistance. I disconnected one end of that power resistor, and sure enough, it's measuring infinite. It's wide open, so I got to replace that with a 15k. Now, as far as the wattage goes. Something this size, modern, with modern technology, would be like a 100 watt resistor. There's no way this is pumping out that much. The whole radio only uses something like 100 watts. Uh, or 160, according to the tag on the back. But uh, I can probably determine the voltage, maybe from the schematic, or uh, once the set's working, and see how much voltage is across it, and use a little Ohm's Law to figure out what the wattage should be. I'm thinking probably more like 5, maybe 10 watts would be sufficient. Now I want to start checking uh, the other transformers. So this is a choke, power supply choke. I want to check for continuity there. I don't, don't know what the value should be, but typical choke would be like 1 to 2,000 ohms, perhaps less. I'm just thinking about field coils and speakers and they're typically uh, in between a 1 and 2,000 ohms. And this is the output transformer. I can uh, see pretty easily these are going to the plug, so that should be going to the voice coil. And primary goes between plates on the 42 tubes, which is pin 2. So here's one of them. And I believe this is the other one. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Do not want it to deal with a fried output transformer as well, although, again, I can use something like this guy right here. Universal Hammond Output Transformer Push-Pull. I got this, I thought I might need it for my Philco 15DX, which coincidentally has push-pull 42s on the output. Running your multiple taps to match different output impedances. Probably use this in this if need be. And again, reading from those service notes about the problem with breakdown inside of here. Maybe not such a bad idea. But these aren't cheap. I'll have to look up, I think this is somewhere 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Here's you can see all the different impedances it can match to. 
So it'd also be nice if I could figure out what the impedance is of the voice coil on that speaker. So I can match this as best I can. Let's see, looks like here's the two wires coming off that choke. And then one of them's got a little splice in it. Who knows why? Well, it's got to be 183 amps. That could very well be, be correct. I'm jumping around a little bit. So I was saying for a field coil and a speaker, it's typically over a thousand ohms, but when it's just a dedicated choke and a power supply, and that's a pretty small one too. I could I could see that being a reasonable value. So that guy could be okay. Now I'm gonna investigate this a little bit further. Let's see if it uh, for sure is open. I'm gonna double check. I got the right pins and the right wires I'm checking. I traced out the wiring a little more carefully and determined that this is the center tap of the primary on the output transformer. So there should be continuity between that center tap and either plate of the 42 tubes. Well, here's one of them. And yes, indeed, we have continuity. Around 200 ohms. But the other one, it's open. Infinity. Now, it could be there's a break in the wire <laughs> going into the transformer. That seems extremely unlikely, but we're taking a look. So it's not going to work right with only one side hooked up. And unfortunately, this transformer is not screwed into the chassis. It's a metal tab, so I'll uh, pry this up, get this out, clean off the goo, check the wiring going inside. But from what I read about this transformer, causing problems anyways, I'm inclined to replace it with a Hammond. And once that's out, uh, I also want to try cleaning up this goo down in here. It's the other side of this. So inside of this we have one of the transformers, audio transformers, I think it's T2 of this guy. And I was wrong earlier. I was on this radio, I was talking about, I thought the third one of the 37s, or the 37 was used for phase inversion, but no, that's not right. 37 is first audio, 42 is second audio, and they use a transformer for the phase inversion to drive the two outputs. So this thing's got a pretty, pretty decent amount of output power. So rather than having a lot of gain in IF stages, I got a lot of gain at the back end. But in addition to that transformer, there's uh, the main filter cap, the 1.3 microfarad here, and that was mentioned again in the in Radiocraft magazine, service tips about this thing starting to leak and starting to ooze, and I'm sure that's what all of this crap is from. It's oozed out from that capacitor getting warm. I cut out all the caps that were mounted below, and I've been chipping away at the tar to free up the screws and uh, two were already gone one here and one here and then there was just one here and one there and it makes me wonder since every cap seemed to have been bypassed down below why did they leave this still in circuit because all that's in here is capacitors and it's just trouble waiting to happen and it seems like it's easy enough to get out I and mean, all you gotta do is there <laughs> and there <laughs> troublemaker is gone so can this be restuffed? Looks like we got a U piece with two end caps. Question is, how does it hold together? I'm guessing it's just friction. And a little tap will pop the sides off. If that's the case, should be able to dispense of all the junk inside and hide some new caps inside, but don't worry about that till we get this working. Because uh, in the meantime, I can just tack some caps down in here and just put that on the side. So I've done some more exploring underneath, and it's not looking so great. 
uh, pulled the output transformer out. It's definitely open on one side of the primary. And I cleaned out a bunch of the gunk down in here. And I believe these two wires were the filter cap that was disconnected, and that's what caused all the heating and tar to ooze out. The other wires are primary and secondary of the phase inversion transformer that drives the 42s. And found the center tap, runs all the way down to, uh, I believe it's this end of the resistor down here. And I'm not getting symmetrical resistance readings. So that's got me definitely concerned. I want to uh, clean this up a bit more and really isolate the wiring to be absolutely certain of that. So that would be this guy here, which reads a little under one kilo ohm. And this guy here, which reads almost 20 kilo ohms. That can't be good. That can't be good. And then there's still the power transformer, which I'm starting to work my way towards. It is fused. However, I found a 10 amp fuse put in there, so it wasn't doing much to protect anything. These caps, I was mistaken. I thought they were part of some other circuitry that was mentioned in the servicing notes, but no, these are actually just line by bypass caps. So, grounded to the chassis and then either side going right to the AC line. Got to cut this out, replace it with safety caps, or leave it out altogether. Transformer is fairly straightforward. So it's all these tubes run off 6.3 volts. So primary, they're very conventional. Here's 5 volt sec secondary driving the rectifier tube, center tapped, gives you the B+. Plus. Going through the filter chokes and filter caps. And then these two axes power every tube. So 6.3 volts, center tap to go into ground, 5 volts for the rectifier tube, and then a few hundred volts center tap. They don't give oh, actually they do give readings, but it's on another sheet I don't have in front of me right now. And then primary which this show is only 110 volts. So if you're gonna be running this uh, right off an HC outlet, which is more typically 120 or 125, should really use a buck boost to drop that down. I'll use my Variac, assuming we even get that far, because I don't know if this is good. So what I'm hoping to do is pop a few tubes in, but leave the rectifier tube out, and get this out of here, hook up the primary to some voltage, and see if we can get the 6.3 volts to light up a few tubes and measure around 5 volts and probably something like six or 700 volts center tapped on that secondary. Finally a bit of good news the voice coil and field coil appear to be good. I get about 2000 ohms on the field coil and very low resistance on the voice coil. See info on the speaker itself. Stromberg Carlson piece number. It's kind of obliterated electrodynamic speaker, and there's some patent numbers. So I was reading up on techniques to uh, fix this up, and it sounds like I don't really need to go as far as to use chamois. Uh, actual leather material. Uh, so guys are saying cloth will work just as uh, as well. So uh, I guess so. Like the the best way to do it is if you can get a, a hoop used for uh, crocheting, I guess, or doing cross stitching or embroidery work that's uh, large enough to surround this. You can just take a, an appropriate piece of fabric, stretch it out, clean off all the crud on the frame. Put a bead of glue down, glue down the cloth, let it set up, trim off the excess, cut a ring out of the center, and then carefully glue the existing paper cone to it. The key is to keep the voice coil from rubbing. And the uh, easy way to do that is to use some shims to slip some thin sheets of something like plastic or uh, heavy paper stock down in there, put a few strips around the perimeter.
to keep that voice coil centered a while cone gets glued up. All right, now let's see about this guy. Gonna have to refer to tube data book again. Let's see, we've got a 5Z3. Let's see what is for that. Here we go. So big pins, one and four, it's filament, and smaller two and three is plate. So this will be filament. So should have five volts there. Let's remember that part again. Yep. Close enough. And then how about on this plate? Yeah. Alright, that seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. Doesn't guarantee anything because we don't have a load on it. But it's promising. It's promising. So, what I'm going to do is get back with the owner of this chassis and tell him about those bad transformers and give him an idea what it'll cost to replace them. So, I think I'm going to use a Hammond 124A to replace the uh, driver. With the phase inverter, the center tab driver that can drive these 242s. That runs about 29 bucks. Tack on uh, sales, uh, sale tax, and shipping. And then uh, I think the one, the 125D output transformer is around the same. So we're looking at about 60 bucks to replace just those two transformers.